Hey guys, it's Frankie Gruesomes, and last time we left off, we had just uh, solidified, extruded the mesh and everything, and exported it. So, for this part, we are going to do textures. So, the first thing I'm going to do is because I um, separated all the groups last time for exporting them, I'm just going to press A and press join. So that I've got it all. And then I'm going to switch this to Cycles Render and load up Photoshop. So, we figure out where we put them. Um, exported two pictures, so let's just find them. There we go, E1 and E2. So one was the better quality and one was the lower quality, so we're just going to duplicate the better quality onto the lower quality one. And if I just zoom in, you can see this is a nice quality, this is a shit quality. The difference is visible. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say drag down. And then I'm going to go to image, adjustments, hue saturation, and write in minus 15. This makes it the correct color for Sims. So we have all our parts here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the magic wand. Click the outside and say select inverse. Make myself a new layer and fill it with white, make myself another new layer and say select modify expand four and also fill it with white. Control D and just put my keygen back on. And fill oops, fill the background with black. So this is going to be our alpha. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to press Control A, copy, Control C, and paste this into our alpha layer. So if you remember what we did is we expanded it by four, so it's slightly bigger than our texture is going to be. And this means that in Sims, when you zoom out, you're not going to get skin-colored seams um, around the edges of your clothing unless you zoom out a lot. Because what happens is Pretty much it's as if the, the texture kind of goes over the edge of the UV and so just by expanding it a little bit we're just making it a bit wider. Also means that um, our alpha is already cut out so only the white bits will be saved. So that means if I put a texture on top of it I won't have to cut it out. So let's, this layer we're going to say filter, blur. Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to put it at 2.3-ish. And then we're just going to say multiply. So if I zoom in a bit, you'll see, if I just reduce this a bit, we get like a dark rim, and this sometimes looks really good. Right, I'm just going to turn this off, and I'm just going to save this as a PSD. And we're going to go back into Blender, and I'm just going to scroll along here to the Materials tab, press plus, new, this dot here, image, open, and I'm going to open that PSD that I just saved. I'm just going to go to Materials, you can see the material, and I can also go to Render, I want to see it a bit better. Okay, so I can see my material here now, this is what it looks like. So I'll just put this on, this layer, save it again, and then go back to render here, and you'll see it creates these dark edges, um, seam line parts. So obviously these are cool, if there's areas you don't want them, just delete them with an eraser around there. So, okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a previous pair of pens that has a button texture, which you can get from just searching buttons on um, Google, pretty much. So, let's pick one that has a button texture. This one should. Right, good. I'm just going to duplicate my button texture layer to mine. There we go. Let's just take this part. Way. Right, good. 
So I'm gonna do, I'm going to size it so it fits over my button. Okay, this is not the button I wanted to be using. layers I usually have at the end, duplicate to E. Right. So now I'm just going to take this, put it under here, and I'm going to turn this to soft layer. I like this one more because it actually is sewn and has a rim. So I'm just going to make this fit over the area that was my button. There we go. And this part is just the back texture the back of it and put the sides. Not too important. These are those parts you can't see anyway. Right. I now feel like it's not wide enough. Save this and again go here, materials, render, got myself some buttons. Good. Next part I want to do is open a leather texture. So the important part is to put this to soft light and so I'm just going to open a leather texture. Again, just search for these. Use the leather. Find one you like. It's quite cool. Obviously, it's huge. Scale this way down and cover this bottom part here because I want leather texture on these parts. There we go. I'm just going to merge these two layers together. You'll see I'm just shoving them under my um, multiplier layer and it'll just copy the shadows onto it because it's soft lighted. Again, now we can go check it out. And you'll see I have a leather texture on these areas. Right. Now, these parts, I want to have a more fabric-y texture, so let's just check what I have. Fabric. This looks pretty cool. No, it doesn't. I've just collected most of these over a very long time, so. Looks pretty basic, but also not really what I want. One. Just have to find which one works for what you're looking for. This one will do. Again, wavy twig. You are not present. I don't like you to see. So I can just keep them. 
pasting them down. Okay, again, I can have a look Oops. what it looks like, just the materials. And, uh, right, I'm just going to put the body behind it. Okay, don't like the direction, it's going the other direction. And then rotate this 90%. And do the same thing again. I don't usually worry about making these grey yet until I'm done. So I'll just merge these together again because it's the same texture. Save and check it out. Okay, I like that better. And I think I want the same texture. But now again rotated at the bottom of my pants. Okay, good. Now I want them to have a jeans texture, which I'm going to do to show you guys. So I'm just going to go into H&M and find myself a pair of pants I like. H&M is good because they have front and back pictures, so we're just going to press big. Yeah. Copy image location. Paste. Copy this image and paste it. Now I'm just going to select the rim. Delete that. And take this image, put it kind of over here, and kind of scale it ish to the right size. So now I'm going to do just going to do this a little bit more so I can see what I'm doing. Is I'm going to say edit transform warp. I like warp most. And I'm just going to fiddle around with my warp and kind of try and make the jeans texture fit on. One side fit, duplicate, edit, transform, warp, and make the other side fit. And then we'll do soft eraser and where is this side? Just trying to make sure I don't do that because I'm going to erase the top part which is the one. Small eraser. Kind of good. See what this looks like. So I'm just going to save and check it out. Okay, doesn't look awful. That part needs to go a bit more in the middle. So let's merge these together. Edit, transform, warp, and just. Into 
looks a bit better. Good. So the cool thing about most of the H&M ones is they also have back pictures. Or not, in this case, which is really not helpful. Oh, let's find some different pants. Here we go, these have a back picture. Copy. Paste. Again. Delete the white surroundings. Right. And then transform control T. Move it over, do the same thing, trying to resize it to fit, and image adjustment, match color, and I'll just match it to layer 12, so the B1, 12, match the color, and it transform, warp. And same procedure as last time. And again, just going to duplicate and Warp one leg first. Just hide that because I can't see what I'm doing. And then duplicate it again. Oops. And it transforms. Warp. the leg. And then soft eraser again. Just line it up and save. This one's got shitty quality, so I'll probably redo that one later. But first, there we go. I mean, have to figure out the sides a bit to make it line up, but otherwise, it already looks pretty good. That's just a quick way to put a jeans texture on things. Right. So, that texture I'll probably redo, or I can try and do it differently. So, here's my texture filter. Use some plugins, sharpen it. There's a lot of plugins you can use. Nope, that's not what I wanted. No, actually, it is. This one. Okay, that was a bit too much, but yeah, I'll probably redo that later. So, okay, so um, now for like what's also cool around the edges, obviously, I have to make this line up a bit in the end. So I'll just end up probably fiddling with that quite a bit later. But because this is only the basics, what we're going to do now is what's also pretty cool, is we're going to again select the outside, the magic one, select invert, 
make a new layer, select, modify, contract by three. And then we're going to turn this into a path by either going onto Windows Paths, if you don't have it open, and pressing on this button here. And you'll now see it's got this line around it. So now I'm going to pick a brush and you can find sewing brushes. One line, I'm going to pick one. This one this is huge. And I'm just going to zoom in and pick a size that kind of works for sewing. Let's say five. Make it black, that's good. And I'm going to click on this tool, right click, and say stroke path using your brush. OK. And then Undo that, Control D to unselect, and you'll see, not very well, but you have a sewing line around the edge of your pens. So what you can also do now is say, I don't know, bevel and emboss. So let's say color overlay, you don't want to make it red, but let's make it like a grayish color. You can do a drop shadow. Ooh. Some spread, maybe not big, whatever, in a glow, whatever you feel like doing, what looks good. And if I save that, render, now see I've got like white sewing lines around my pants. That sometimes makes a pretty cool effect. Okay, so there we go. Just gonna redo that front bit because it's really annoying me. Mm, not quite sure why that image ended up being really bad. Let's see if I can get it again. Sure, it's weird. Edit, transform, warp again. No, no, I'm just gonna. Mm. Not sure how high I need it to line up with this part. Yeah. Nice lines at the side. Okay. Go to here. Duplicate layer. Hide this. Transform warp. Um, do in a bit here. Now I've at least got these white sewing lines to see where I'm going. And again, duplicate this one, hide, edit, transform, warp, and warp this one. Good. Again, unhide them all. Soft brush. Mm. 
Oops. It also lines up a lot better. Okay, good. Again, this middle bit is really wonky. So this edge transforms warp and just. Move this top bit sideways a bit. There we go, centered it a bit better. Okay, so I also like this bottom part of the texture, so. has this rim at the top. So I want this here, so I'm just going to say edit, transform, warp again. I just want this texture at the top. Drop the eraser. Save also this one, two, three. I'm going to say edit and just try and match that color a bit more. There we go, so it doesn't look so odd. There we go. Let's make that a bit lighter. Uh, that kind of lines up. That doesn't line up. Kind of lines up. Doesn't line up. I'll make that line up later. But yeah, you can do stuff like that. Just, you know, Control M, go up if you just want to lighten it a bit. way to do that. Cool. Right, so what I want to do is I want to put a bit of a design on here. So doing the same thing. I'm just going to take my brush. I want sewing lines. That's good. And I'm going to start up here. Click, shift, hold, click down here, and you'll see it makes a straight line click, shift, click, down here, got a straight line. Shift, click, shift, down here, I don't like that one. Pressing shift creates straight lines in case you really just want to do a straight line somewhere. You can also use it for other stuff, like, for example, here, I can click, shift, click, shift, click, 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 click.
click to make it all the way around. Also, I can make a new layer and, for example, if I want text, just use Google Kids Hideout again. Select this. Um, I think it was called this one I use. To rotate sideways. And again, I can say drop shadow or something. It usually just makes it. A bit thicker. And then I'm just going to reduce it a little bit so it looks kind of like it's sewn on. Um, I'm going to just keep typing. In case you want something like text or something, it's pretty easy to do. Right. Now I've got myself some dungarees that say Group Kids Hideout because I felt like it. Um, with leather around them and buttons. Cool. So once you're done adding the text you like, um, what I usually like to do is add some shading. So I'll go back here and... Oops, I also need to delete some texture parts. Not that. There we go. That's a little nothing. I'm just going to turn off all my textures. Delete the ones I didn't use. Yeah, and the outline. So I've only got my gray and I'm just going to make a new layer of my gray and I'm also going to turn it to soft light and I'm going to use my favorite brush but you can use any soft brush want to find it way too many brushes uh. there we go um so I use a draw pad which I have attached so I'm just going to pin good so I usually set my brush in brush textures to transfer set as pin pressure so that the more I press on my thing, uh, draw pad, the more it shows. And I zoom in a bit more. All I'm going to do is I'm going to select a pretty darkish color, make my soft brush a bit lighter, and you'll see on my new layer I can just highlight some of the shadows. So I'm going to do this relatively quickly. I'll probably redo it later, but this is just to kind of show you what I mean. So I can see where the folds are, and I'm just going to kind of highlight them, draw myself some new folds, and just give my Hence, a bit more texture. And I do this with a lot of my pants. 
um, well, what actually I do with all my clothing, just to make it not look so flat. So obviously, I usually spend a lot more time doing this. I'm just going to really quickly draw some stuff on so you can see what I'm talking about. So yeah, I can see where the folds are. I just kind of highlight these. Obviously, it takes a bit of time to figure out what looks best, how to shade. But I guess we'll figure it out after a while. It just takes a bit of practice. And you can see this is just to make the um, highlights come out a bit more and give your mesh a bit more texture. Draw pads are very useful for this. I have one by um, Huion, which is like a cheaper version of draw pads, and it only cost me like 50 bucks. And it's really good. Well, for 50 bucks. But it has its purpose and it works well for it. So, yeah, just kind of like highlight the wrinkles and the folds on your. Um, clothing, give it a bit more of a texture. So that doesn't look quite as basic. Uh, you can use dark and you can use light. I'm just going to quickly go over it with a dark um, color so that I can then show you the difference. It's good if you already have like pre wrinkled clothing because then you can see where the wrinkles are supposed to go. more difficult if you don't have wrinkles and you've got to draw them on yourself. I'm not particularly good at that part, as you can see. Anyway, okay, let's do the back a bit. Actually, I'll just show you the front. While I'm at it, you can see without and with just a lot of highlighting here, so I'll show you the difference. Okay, so let's just save this image real quick. Without. Obviously. And with, and you can just see it goes from flat to looking a bit more wrinkly. And then all I'm going to do is, if I now put all my textures back on and I can duplicate this layer just for a bit more extreme look. render and you can just see looks a bit more like scrunchy jeans so yeah I usually spend a lot of time doing that and for like parts like here I will just use the brush a bit bigger and just kind of add some shadows make it look a bit well dirtier I guess however you want to call it just a little bit of shading around it but yeah, so that's another thing I do. So yeah, I've got this far so far. Um, yeah, I don't know if I like this bottom bit very much. I don't think I do. Okay. 
Okay, so once we've finished the texture how we like it, we've got to make our actual textures. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start pretty simple. Um, obviously make as many textures as you like. I'm just going to pick some parts up that I don't like. This tool's pretty good. Or not. Let's look I don't like this part here or this part here. So, oh. This is also a pretty cool tool. I'm just going to duplicate from left to right so that I can get rid of the edge parts. Just like that. I don't like them. The loops, because I mean, why do you need belt loops if you've got suspenders? Obviously, fixing up the edge parts um, in that color, I can then do in 3D mode as well. This color seems to match up pretty good, so. I can just duplicate this color onto this side. Mm, do the same for this. This one. Yep. So wait, it's the, the right side looks pretty good. Let's just save this first, see if it looks better. Tiny bit. Not much. But yeah, what I can do is I can say, um, just gonna clone stamp this color of it onto this side. I'm not quite sure why it's not doing it. Oh, because that's a top layer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I would fiddle around with that just a little bit. Okay, good. That was my white zone line. I can keep those in if I want to. So, um, first thing to save would be make a new layer, make it dark like 11, 11, 11. Color over it, save it. Now go to image, image size 1024 because this doesn't need to be very big. Save as the S for specular, that's what I do. Save. Now, usually uh, my old tutorial, I cut out the parts. If I show you now, the S, you can see it's already cut out. This is because of our panel that we edited. So I'll just undo that and step back so that we have the correct size. Good. Now what we need to do is we need to make a multiplier and we need to make a um, mask. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, okay, this is the overlay. So on this I'm just going to duplicate to new and then file save as DDSEO for overlay. Um, I saved the overlay on, on a new layer, otherwise I'd have to delete my alpha channel and then redo my alpha channel, so I just usually do it that way. Okay, so um, first thing is first, all my textures get names so that I can see what the hell I'm doing. And all the jeans parts together. Jeans, those parts are obvious what it is. What is this? I don't even know. Delete it. Didn't seem to be anything. That was a part I no longer wanted. 
Okay. What's this? Okay, those are my shadows. Right. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the ones that are textures. Let me just undo this for a minute. Duplicate them. And it usually helps to work with groups. This is group one. I'm just going to make a new folder and shove all this in there. Right. So to make my multiplier, what I need to do is I'm going to say adjustment to saturation. Kill the saturation. And I've got to make it kind of the same gray as this. So this is a lot lighter. So I'm going to say Control N and lighten it up. Maybe darken up a little bit more now. Good. Same with these. That kind of matches the color. This is also way too light. So image adjustment, hue saturation. And for my multiplier, I don't want this texture to be so strong, so I'm just going to take it down a notch. Good. Same with the leather one. Control M. And lighten it up. Okay, so now that I've got this texture, perfect, I can save this as my multiplier. So save as M. Good. So call this group multiplier. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a oops, not on the layer. Maybe that's not that. Turn that off. I'm going to duplicate my jeans texture. Make a new folder, not inside the other one, and stick my copy in there and call this my mask folder. So jeans textures are a bit more complicated. So first I'm going to do um, go to decide what your four channels are going to be. So I want two channels for my jeans. That means I have two channels left, which means um, difficult decision to make. I'm going to use FF for the fourth channel, for this, and this I think. Obviously I can make a couple of different masks, and then the FF00FF channel for the bottom part here. My button obviously doesn't need a channel, Oops, I forgot to add this part in. And I want to make my jeans recoverable. So what I'm going to do, should have done that. <sighs> just make it on the new layer, just so you know. New layer. Right, so I'm going to go above my jeans layer and I'm just going to this off again because I wasn't supposed to do that. And I'm going to use um, these adjustments, if you can't see them, Windows Adjustments and a gradient map. And I'm going to select the colors of my gradient map to be the first channel, red, and second channel. Never do this with the fourth channel. It'll just make your life really, really difficult. Good. And now what I can do is I can fiddle with my jeans layer by using Control M again and try and just like to make these colors a bit more extreme. So I tried to make the yellow like the highlighting parts and the red the main color of my jeans. So I like to keep it a bit of a mix like this. And this is the easiest way to make something like jeans recolorable. Okay, um, once I'm done with that, um, to save this, just make sure you undo all the other layers around, so it just looks like this in the end, and save as 
E M U like that. And that's how you make jeans look colorful really quickly. Right, so that's pretty much that. If I wanted to make a um, channel without the jeans, then I can just make a new layer of my mask and say, so just to say that I'll make a flame multiplier for this. Um, do this, and I say I want that, those um, sewing lines that I had, those white sewing lines as the next channel. The easiest way to do this, or to make text, let's do the text as well. Duplicate the text layer and shove it into mask at the top. Right, what I would do is I would say here, again go to effects and go to color overlay and my color overlay I would pick the second channel. This is the easiest way to recolor stuff. So. See, it's gone yellow, you can't really see it, but it is. I can show you better with the um, this. F, 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 so zero. There we go. F, 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 zero, zero. And now I have that as my second color. So we've got that red, yellow, blue, and I can just save as E U 1. Obviously, you would have to make a fitting um, multiplier layer from this where this is just gray without a texture. So, if I want, I don't know, corduroy pants or who knows what. Um, these I then need to open because they're four layered. And um, for this one, it's pretty simple. I just select the blue area, go to channels alpha, use just a big fat old solid brush, pop opacity, and paint that a bit white. Select inverse, paint the rest black. File, save. And for sewing lines, actually, I find it easier to make the sewing lines the blue channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, recolor this as a yellow, and you'll see why. And make the so I'm do that. And I'm do that. Color overlay and turn the color overlay to white. Same here for all the bits I want to be that channel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all of these and save this. So save as DDSE1. Let's open E. to my original and I'm going to take this layer and those two text layers select them all duplicate layers to E1 rasterize type to make more actual layers merge layers and then we'll say copy and go to alpha Get this entire thing back and then take paste. That wasn't very good. Make a new layer underneath this layer. Make it completely black. That's the way to do it. Merge these two. Copy. Paste this to your alpha. 
so that you can make that the fourth layer because it's all white now. Unhide that and just save as DDS. Good. The alpha channel is the fourth layer, so everything that's white in the alpha channel will be the fourth color. So that's why I just did that because it's a lot easier just to make that white. Cool. So that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you. So obviously you can make multiple textures, you can make oh, whatever you want to do pretty much um, to do the textures. And the cool thing is you can always just view them here. So pretty much this is what I ended up with. Um, also what's nice to do is just import a t-shirt or something underneath, maybe not that one. File import. Kits conversions. I forgot what the name of that top was. Theo? No. Drew? I don't know. Do I have a t shirt? Top A? Top A sounds good. Okay. That's gone black. So. these back on turn off the mask layer put back on this layer save and obviously I still need to edit the mesh a bit there and then we export it but yeah you can kind of just see what it looks like with the top or something underneath Toddler. Oh, sorry, that's not right. Test. So yeah. I mean, I still need to edit it a bit, but this is where we are at the end of this part. Obviously, I need to just go to sculpt mode, draw, and just fix up this clipping, and then re-export my mesh again. This is a pair of overalls just made real quick, so you can see what it looks like. Obviously, I can also save these, uh, this pant texture on its own without making it recolorable if I just want to keep that as well. So yeah, that's just a couple of basics. Obviously, for the more detailed stuff, uh, I need longer tutorials, but that's what I do with textures. Um, oh yeah, the last thing I wanted to show you is you can... If I open, I'm going to make a texture with my multiplier on as well as my button. And I'm just going to save as the in. Open EN. If you want to make a normal map, this is how. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say alpha channel, that button, RGB, select inverse, layer from background, delete. Um, make adjustment hue saturation and just make this all array and add a white background, merge, filter NVIDIA tool, normal map filter in web, Y, and why is it not doing it? Okay, flatten image, filter, normal map filter, now it's doing it. And then um, there are actions, I don't know if I have one saved that does normal map for you not normal map action um yeah to make a normal map and then i can save this as a normal map in case i just want um some more texture on mine obviously i have to consider if i want it with or without the text on it so, for example, if I make multiple versions of this, 
and I make a non-jeans version of it, and then obviously it's going to look stupid with a jeans normal map on it because the normal map is for all your colors. If I only make a jeans version, then this is a good idea. So yeah, just consider if you want a normal map, but that's pretty much how I would do it. Okay. Next time we'll be probably, hopefully, finishing up.